from the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston. It's the Cube, covering IBM Think. Brought to you by IBM. All right, man, welcome back to the Cube's coverage of IBM 2020. It's the digital IBM 2020, the Think event experience. My name is Dave Vellante, and you are watching the Cube. Steve Canepa is here. He's the global GM of communications or the communications sector for IBM. Steve, how you doing? Good to have you on. Doing great, Dave. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're very welcome. I mean, communications is sort of a, bro a broad term for the stuff you cover, telco, cable, entertainment, broadcast, publishing, satellite, sports, music, games. I mean, social, wow. You run the gamut. Um, it's exciting pretty, times. Pretty big role. Yeah, you, I'll say you got exciting times. There's so much going on in your space. Um, and, and of course, this pandemic has really you know, hit the communications industry in, in so many different ways, some tailwinds, some headwinds, and it's just crazy out there. What are you seeing and what are you guys doing to support clients? Well, first and importantly, our thoughts go out to everyone uh, as we're all dealing with this around the world. Um, I have the opportunity to work with clients uh, in every geography uh, around the globe, and each and every one of them is busily dealing with how they make sure their employees are safe, uh, how they're providing services to their customers, and uh, we're right there alongside them, helping them do that as well. Uh, for, for us in the telecommunications space, as you know, it's actually central. It's an essential industry that's helping the world deal with this as we are all going virtual like this, this session we're having today. So we're working with clients to help them get their resources in place so that they can support their businesses, their network platforms, uh, their media services in a way that uh, they can keep the business running. Our telecommunications customers all around the globe had to get their resources in work at home environments. Uh, we, we worked with many of them in deploying real time services. Uh, we also worked with them in deploying uh, call center chatbot uh, capabilities so that they could answer questions uh, from their customers, from other members of the community as they were coming in. So tremendous opportunity for us to help them uh, respond to what's happening. It, it's actually quite amazing, the response. I mean, you think about telco, you think about telco infrastructure, what comes to mind is, it's hardened, it's reliable, it, it works, and all of a sudden you've got all these remote workers. It, the, the pace of the pivot has been actually quite astounding. Um, I mean, your thoughts on that? Yeah, and it actually goes hand in glove in, in, uh, in what we've been preparing the industry for generally. I mean, there's been this evolution to digital service providers that's been happening in the industry now uh, for a number of years. And in fact, the center point of, of what we're doing now to help the telcos virtualize and abstract those networks so that there's software-based services platforms that can respond to these kinds of peak load demand issues. Not that anyone anticipated COVID, but the ab ability to have a platform that can scale your business and allow you to respond, move services where they need to be moved, be much more agile in the way you work. These are all playing into the ability to respond to the situation. Steve, I want to ask you about something you said in a, in a recent article in Forbes. You said winners in the 5G and edge era will be those who embrace the hybrid multi-cloud approach. Well, first of all, I want to ask you, I mean, 5G can't get here fast enough, but so you're kind of predicting my inferences of a 5G and edge era, you know, coming this decade. Um, like I said, it can't, it can't happen soon enough, but uh, yeah, yeah, what, what are your there, thoughts on that coming era? Yeah, in my view, there's three fundamental things that are happening simultaneously. So first, obviously 5G is emerging. It's showing up now. Uh, most service providers around the world are starting to already deploy their private 5G capabilities. We're seeing it show up in evolution form in consumer marketplace. So 5G is here and will continue to scale. Uh, the second key transformation that's happening is the telco network itself is becoming a hybrid cloud platform. And what I mean by that is just as we saw when video abstracted as a service and it could be deployed on over the top service uh, platforms, enabling things like our interview that we're doing today to happen, that got loaded uh, on top of now open IT platform. The same exact thing is happening in the network domain where the network services, data services, voice services, multimedia services are being put on an open platform architect that allows you to respond. And then the third key thing that's happening in the market is this edge phenomenon. And this is all about the ability to move workloads, to move services out closer to where things happen and take advantage of those key 5G features like ultra low latency, Increase, increase bandwidth, and of course, the ability to slice the network now to dedicate it to a specific application. This opens up a whole new set of services. 
Yeah, I mean, as I was sort of alluding to before, the reliability of telco networks has been the hallmark of that infrastructure. As, as we move to this more open, sort of standardized uh, environment, Steve, I would imagine that one of the technical challenges is maintaining that level of reliability and predictability while at the same time being able to support remote workers, uh, et cetera, low latency workloads. Can you comment on that? Yeah, so a couple of key points there. One is, uh, as, as you may know, um, IBM uh, acquired Red Hat a little over a year ago. Red Hat has created a, an open platform for the telcos to modernize their core infrastructure. And the power of that is we can seize this enormous upstream community now, and that community can help accelerate the rate pace of transformation that's happening, bring innovation in. That's really powerful. The second is once we go to an open platform, software-based platform, we can infuse automation, extreme levels of automation, and AI for intelligent, predictive capability. So now think about the network becoming a living, breathing, uh, re a responding platform where it's based on um, software so we can deploy services and functions and we can automate those services and functions. That level of intelligence serves as the ability to then get out these services. So Steve, definitely we had, a, I think, a decent understanding of the, the Red Hat and the strategy around OpenShift and, and, and the, um, the container approach, hybrid multi-cloud. Yeah. What I didn't realize is that there was specificity around the telco uh, industry. Can you talk more specifically about yeah. what IBM is doing in that regard? Yeah, no, it, it's a great question. Um, Red Hat has a very significant presence in 120 telcos around the globe. Uh, and so not only their Red Hat Linux, which is uh, kind of a de facto standard in the marketplace, but their uh, OpenStack architecture, now we're moving out to the OpenShift architecture. And as part of that, uh, the relationship with an enormous upstream community of uh, talent that's building on those platforms. And so um, we're able to really infuse into Red Hat the kind of requirements that are necessary for their uh, software platform to serve as, as the platform, the open platform um, for the telcos as we go forward. So uh, it, it, it has been an incredible synergy. Uh, I think of it as kind of two puzzle pieces that fit together incredibly well. At IBM, we've had the long standing relationship with all the service providers around the world in helping them transform their business. And now uh, with, with Red Hat, we have the opportunity to really integrate what we're doing from an automation and AI standpoint with all the power of that Red Hat platform. So where do you see the edge fitting in to this hybrid multi-cloud approach? Is it sort of an extension of, of cloud? Is it, an, is it a new cloud? Um, you know, we yeah. are envisioning this seamless experience between on-prem, cloud, right. multi-cloud, and edge. Yeah, I think of it in a kind of simple Venn diagram where you have the, kind of this virtualized open software-based telco network on one side and you have the edge on the other and in the middle, you have this kind of combination where you do edge in partnership with the telco. And the idea here is that all industry are going to want to provide a next generation of insights to their uh, customers uh, and to their partners. The ability to um, move those workloads. So think about a manufacturing shop, shop floor as an example. You know, we've already had IoT centers, hundreds if not thousands of them. Now we can infuse video cameras and take you know, a huge amount of data through the enhanced bandwidth of 5G and bring that down to an edge platform and analyze that video data in real time, whether employees are in safe zones, uh, maybe with COVID now, even whether or not keeping the proper social distancing um, and, and looking at, actually looking at everything that's coming off of that platform or manufacturing line, looking at the equipment itself and, and adding AI to that so that we can analyze it in real time. Edge allows us to take advantage of those 5G attributes and to, and to put it where, wherever that workload should run, whether it's on the plant floor itself as in proximity to where that equipment is or back at a central office location within a network of a telco. Well, this is huge for the telcos because for years, you know, as I keep talking about their hardened network, but their cost per bit has been coming down. They're responsible for putting in that infrastructure, maintaining it, that infrastructure. And then you got the over the top providers, right. you know, laying out content, growing like crazy. It's really disrupted that industry. This is going to change the way in which telcos are able to compete, is it not? It's a, it's a great point. Yes. If you think about the last generation of evolution, you know, when we went to 4G and, and you know, smartphones came out, think about the Apple 
app store as an example. Folks started not going to the telcos anymore for those services. They went to that OTP uh, capability to get those applications. Now think about in this edge world as we essentially are creating platforms for innovation for businesses in all industries. And they can now innovate on those platforms and create in incredible value in, in their business. And the telcos now can add beyond just the transport capabilities of 5G, but the artificial intelligence, automation, they can expose certain data capabilities that can make those applications smarter, understanding proximity data that could be applied to things like logistics or pricing, or as I said, operations like in manufacturing. So a tremendous new set of value. In fact, most analysts say a trillion dollars value is going to be created here. And the opportunity I see is that the, the open network platform becomes a way for the service providers to not only capture value for themselves, but to accelerate the value for businesses in all industries. Well, I think we're going to see some huge moves in the chessboard, more m and I mean, it's going to be a very exciting time. And of course, 5G's at the heart of it. But Steve, I wonder if you could give us IBM's point of view in terms of where we are with 5G. I mean, sometimes I see it pop up on my phone. I'm like, come on, that's not real 5G quite yet. We, saw, we, we heard you know, recently that Apple might somewhat delay you know, it's new, new phones, there's maybe 5G's involved in that, but it's going to take some time for that infrastructure to, to roll out. But, but what's your point of view on sort of that time frame and, and, the, and the business impact that we can That's, all expect? Yeah, no, it's a good question. And we will see it roll out over time. Some, some things are starting to roll out. Now think about stadiums or other venues, you know, where, um, you know, you, you have a, a manufacturing shop floor as an example, a oil rig off the coast. I mean, you have, environments where you could create 5G infrastructure uh, in a private model today. And then of course, consumer models are going to roll out as cities uh, continue to get deployed by, by the various service providers. But I think the important point, which is what we've uh, spoken about so far, is that as we start to create this platform capability around the edge, and we start to transform those network, uh, network themselves inside the telcos to platform, we can start to capture those values today in a 4G world. And as 5G comes along, you, would, you just essentially evolve into the, um, the capabilities that that brings, especially with regards to latency and, and bandwidth. Now, some, some applications where slicing will be really important. Think about a, a medical operation where a doctor is consulting on the surgery in a remote location. Now, if I know for sure that bandwidth is going to be there, that doctor no longer has to be in the same location as that robotic equipment, as an example. So the ability to have dedicated bandwidth, which will come with 5G, will be a important attribute that, that gets added. I mean, the possibilities are really mind boggling. You mentioned st stadiums, and of course, ho hopefully at some point we'll be able yeah. to go to football games again. But I mean, the, you know, the, the last decade was all about how big can you make the screen in the stadium and, and uh, you know, versus this screen, right? This right. is where a lot of the right. action is going to be now, replays and just, you know, the whole experience of, you know, ordering goods and, and, and services, and then of course, you know, hardened environments like oil rigs, et cetera. So yeah. really, uh, you know, th we're not just going to return to the last decade. We've been talking about that a lot here. Yeah. Uh, last well, question. One, is, what, what, oh, go ahead, yeah, please. Just, I was just going to say, yeah, one, one of the, uh, an example that I like to, uh, to mention just because it kind of brings us all together. Think about first response. Uh, now we're in the midst of a COVID thing, but soon uh, in California again, you know, unfortunately we'll probably get close to fire season. Think of in a 5G edge world, what that might look like. So the minute that fire starts in, in uh, some location in California, drones are in the air, sending video down to an edge platform that's being analyzed to understand where that fire is going, and importantly, everything that's in its path and how to best battle it. Sensors coming in from IoT sensors in the area, feeding in data. Our weather company app, feeding in real-time weather statistics, wind patterns. Know, temperature changes that are going to influence the way that that fire performs. And now with the announcement we made with Samsung just recently with our edge platform, the ability to have those first responders have sensors on them, Samsung devices that are measuring their vital signs. And with the predictive models that are being built, we'll know whether that first responder is in distress or about to be in distress. The ability to scale our inbound communications capability digitally so that chatbots can handle this you know, enormous increase in the amount of folks calling in to get information on what's happening in real time. And of course, with the AI in that edge platform, moving all of that physical equipment, the asset, human, humans, the first responders in the optimal position at all time in order to get that fire out as soon as possible. I think it's a good example of how we can see these capabilities come together in a 5G and edge world and allow us to get enormous value 
saving lives, saving property, you know, responding to an incident like that. I mean, it's a great example of how you're going to put innovation into action because you, you touched all points. You, you imagine the amount of data now that's being created in that example that you just gave. I mean, it's just going exponential. Applying artificial intelligence, machine intelligence, and then the other, the other phrase you use is real time. And we're talking about real time or near real time uh, decisions actually being made potentially oftentimes by the machines or in combination with, with humans so that the, these, these actions can be taken. And of course, it's all occurring on an infrastructure that's, that's sort of an expanding definition of cloud, not just on-prem, not just hybrid, not just multi-cloud, but now the edge. It's really, yes. it's really going to be an exciting 10 years. You got, you got it exactly right. And, and importantly, you know, using that example, once that fire's put out, that edge platform can wind back down uh, to where it was before the incident occurred. But all the intelligence that was gained during that can be taken to the next incident as it happens. So this agility becomes really powerful because we get the cumulative learning that happens in these models going forward. Amazing. So uh, where can people go to get some more information on sort of IBM's edge approach? Yeah, if, if you go to ibm.com, you'll see uh, information on both on IBM Edge uh, solutions that we're putting forward into the marketplace and what we're doing specifically with the telecommunications service providers to help them transform their networks to take advantage of this incredible opportunity. Well, Steve, thanks so much for your time. Really great discussion. Uh, appreciate you coming on and sharing with our community. My pleasure, thank you. And thank you, everybody. This is theCUBE's continuous coverage of IBM Think 2020, the digital event experience. My name is Dave Vellante. Keep it right there, but right back right after this short break. <laughs>